hopefully you'd have watched the first two films in our series on how to prepare a subfloor and your underlay options. But before we get started on laying our laminate floor, there are a couple of things to consider. Firstly, you need to decide which way you're going to lay your boards. Laying the boards towards a light source makes the joints less visible, and laying the boards across the width of the room will make a room feel wider. We're going to be laying our boards the length of the room, which is going to make the room feel longer. However, if you're laying your new floor across an existing wood subfloor, you're going to need to lay the boards across the old floor for a more solid and stable result. Setting out is roughly laying out the floorboards to work out how they'll be arranged and to plan for obstacles like pipes. To start, set out the very first row to check you won't be left with a very short length at the end. If you are, just trim the very first board. Now we need to check that the last row of boards won't be too narrow. You don't want a tiny slither of board at one end of the room, as it will look untidy and can be hard to cut. We can work this out with a simple sum. Don't forget to factor an expansion gap of 10mm at either end of the room. If you divide the length of the room by the width of your board, it will tell you not only how many boards you'll need, but the leftover width of the final board that you'll have to cut. If the last row turns out to be less than a third of a board, it will be easier to cut the very first row down as well, so that the cut boards are not too narrow. Finally, you should also think about obstacles like radiator pipes. Cutting the boards will be easier and tidier if the pipes fall in the middle of a board's length or width rather than a join. So set out the boards, see where the pipes fall and trim the boards accordingly. We're going to show you how to lay this simply fit laminate flooring. Now, locking systems do vary between manufacturers, so always check the instructions on the pack before you start. Right, we've talked about expansion gaps, and this is needed as laminate and solid wood flooring expands and contracts due to the changes in temperature and humidity. So to stop your floor buckling, you must leave a 10 mil gap for laminate, and to make it easier, they have these expansion spaces. Lay the first board in the left hand corner, over the underlay with the tongue nearest the wall. Put a 10mm expansion spacer against the end of the board and at intervals along the wall. Lay the next board end on, making sure that the tongue of one board sits snugly in the groove of the previous one, at a 30 degree angle. Lower the board and lock into place. Carry on doing this until you get to the end of the row. You'll probably have to cut a board to fit the last row. To work out exactly the correct size for the last board of the row, lay it directly on top of the last board you laid. Then take a third board and use it as a template. Press it snugly up against the wall and with an expansion spacer in place, use the other end of the board as a template and mark the board you're going to cut with a pencil. When you're cutting your boards, it's always best to do this outside or in another room, so that you don't get any dust or debris on your subfloor or underlay. And always remember to try and keep a window open to keep the room ventilated. First, clamp your board to a workbench, then cut the board. We're using a jigsaw, but you could also use a fine-toothed handsaw. If you're using a jigsaw, make sure you use a laminate blade and have several spares to hand as the cuts will get rougher as the blade deteriorates. Don't forget to wear your dust mask and safety goggles. Now it's just a matter of fitting the cut board into position and that's your first row done. To create a pleasing look, make sure the joints of the next row are not in the same place as the first, but form an overlapping pattern. Cut a board or use the offcut from the end of the previous row. Repeat this pattern across the whole floor. Doing this will also make your new floor stronger. To start the next row, angle the cut board against the first board with the cut end by the wall. Then add your expansion spacer. Press forward and down to lock into place. 
Then just repeat this along the whole row. Alternatively, if you've got some help, clip a row of boards together, then put the whole row in place. Just repeat this process across the whole room. We'll come back to how you lay the last row in a bit. But before that, it's like you'd have come across either a doorway or some radiator pipes. Don't worry about it as they're dead easy. First, a radiator pipe. Lay your board next to the pipe and at the center of the pipe, draw a line across the width of the board. Now lay the end front onto the pipe and mark where the center of the pipe intersects the line you've drawn. This is where you'll need to drill your hole. Use a power drill with a 32 mm spade bit. This will give you a big enough hole to allow for expansion as a standard radiator pipe is 15 mm. Again, do this in another room or outside and don't forget the dust mask and goggles. Next, draw two lines from the hole to the edge of the board at a slight angle, like this. Just cut along the lines with your saw and remove the wedge, but make sure you keep it. Fit the board into place, glue the wedge in, then wipe off any excess adhesive immediately. The next obstacle you may come across is a door frame. If your door opens into the room, you need to check that it will have enough clearance over the new flooring and threshold bar. If not, you'll need to remove the door and trim it down. Top tip. Don't try and cut the flooring to fit. You'll get a much neater finish if you trim the architrave like this, so the underlay and flooring fit underneath. Just use a chisel to remove the waste piece of wood. Right, that's pipes and doors tackled. On to the last row. To cut boards to fit this row, place the board you want to cut directly over the previous row like this. You can hold it in place with some tack. Use a third board as a template. Press one edge of the template to the skirting board and use the other edge to mark the board underneath. Top tip, do this in the actual place the board will go just in case your walls are slightly out. Once you've cut the whole row, slot them into place. The last things left to do are the finishing touches, the flooring trim, radiator pipe hole covers and the threshold bar. All this will complete the look. Check out our final film in the series, 